we are back with Hasim Dragos, the vampire. And we are headed towards Wenhelm to investigate the rumors of someone trying to contact a the Dark Brotherhood. So, the first thing I want to do before we do anything is we have some perk points to spend. Now, I know what I want to spend them on. The first thing that we're going to spend is on our vampiric metabolism. We're going to slow that down so that we're going to not burn as many blood points and then we're going to buy something from our uh, vampiric perk tree. We're going to take ice flesh. All right. So what does ice flesh do? Your undead skin transforms to make you impervious to cold. Armor is improved 20 points. Fire resistance is improved 10% and your attackers may suffer cold damage when they hit you. So that's going to come in handy if we fight basically anybody. So I think we're going to just see if uh, see what we need to do. Should we spend the night here? Yeah, let's stay the night. And then we'll make our way towards Windhelm. So I don't think we're going to burn at, through as many blood points when we sleep now. Um, this is just a perk. A literal perk, but also a perk of us just getting older, stronger, feeding on more people. Uh, being a vampire fledgling is not fun. Yeah, see. That's great. We still have a ton of blood. Um, but it's really nice because as you get stronger, um, things. I, I I feel like for a regular character that has no vampiric powers, like uh, one of my other characters, Ahab, uh, he's. He doesn't have all the weaknesses a, a vampire has. So uh, they're just easier in the beginning to level up. But I, I feel like... A, no, I don't feel like I know this. A vampire... Ooh, yes, please. A vampire, as they start to level up, they become incredibly powerful. Let's say a prayer to our good lord. Malek Ball. Let's... Let, let's bounce. Let's get out of here. So we're going to grab a bite to eat on the road. Literally. I made that joke before. We'll make it again. Let's get out of here. So we're getting close to the city of Windhelm. Can we see it from here? Kinda. It's down there. Hasim can see it. Let's pull out our musket. We are going to look for prey. I've been analyzing and thinking about the mind of Hasim who he is as a person and I've been sitting on this idea of what kind of person he was before he was a vampire and uh, I'm starting to feel like this guy was always a monster he was always he always had the capacity to do horrendous, horrible things. Um, how's it going? You know what? There's no need to even sneak. Hey. Don't do that. Don't do what? Uh, no. <laughs> Oh, I'm laughing just because, like, in mid-sentence, he, he's talking about how glad he was we didn't attack him, and then 
falls to his death. So let's check things out. I think we shouldn't have problems for the most part with these items deselecting in the future. Um, oh, I see some stuff up there. They're pretty dang good with this musket. It's a wolf. Got him. Um, what I was saying was I, I think about who Hasim was when he was in the war with his cavalry unit. We turned down the Sound, the master sound. Let's see. Audio, just attack. Alright. Um, and uh, he was the type of warrior, the type of soldier that I feel like he was. Um, if you guys are familiar with something called the Geneva Convention, uh, that's a basically contract that most countries abide by well they're supposed to at least that when you go to war you don't do th it's kind of funny to say but you don't do th you can kill people but don't do it in inhumanely so don't burn people alive goblins don't be disgusting and I feel like that around them. I want to keep talking about this and I can't focus. Um, I feel like that Hasim would see the Geneva Convention as like a bunch of malarkey. You know, the, it's, it's a ridiculous idea that when he was fighting the High Elves that he did atrocities. Uh, I would actually like to write and think about some of the horrendous acts that he did to Thalmor agents to get information from them, but he had no problem doing those things. That he just saw it as a part of war, and uh, it's something that he had to do to get what he needed. And so he continues to live that way. That if he sees something that he wants, and that it helps him get where he needs to go, that he is willing to do that. He has strong, strong convictions, but he is also. A, nar a narcissist and that he you know what, I don't even think the word is a narcissist a narcissist he's sociopathic and that he cares about what he wants over other people's needs and so it was good that he was a soldier because it served Hammerfell um, but it was just allowing the monster to be who he really was. So, yeah, I'm. Well, I'll be looking deeply into Hasim as a person. Hasim, the life that he lived, uh, post or pre vampire. So we're getting closer to Windhelm. Rain's clearing up, or is it just turning into snow? Here, one, another one of those sky shards. Come on. There it is. I, if I was playing another character, it truly would be difficult for me to get up to a ledge like that. So I love that we're able to do that. So right now, Hasim looks upon the city, looking to see if there are any answers inside there that would lead him to get information on this secret group called the Dark Brotherhood. This is all new for him. 
the architecture, the way that they have formed their buildings, are this is all alien. It's strange. He's taking this all in. Skyrim is different to him. He does... It's funny because you would think, does he miss the desert? Does he miss the warmth of the sun? But uh, if he did, uh, it, you know, he'll he'll never see the sun again, for the most part. Right? There's perks and stuff that he can get to be able to help him be in sunlight, but sunlight will always almost kill him. So, um, yeah, I'm sure he misses his home, but he's also completely accepting that this is his new unlife and this is the direction he's going chose to go so let's take off our hood and uh let's make our way in come here where you're not wanted you eat our food you pollute our city with your stink and you refuse to help the storm folks. Mm. We have we'll just observe. Because it's not our fight. Hey, maybe the reason these Grayskins don't help in the war is because they're Imperial spies. Mm. Imperial spies? You can't be serious. Maybe we'll pay not them. our fight. Uh, is Hasim hate any particular race? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. He's always seeing who, what people he can use to help him gain power. But I, I don't. I think there's a group of people that he hates, which is the Thalmor. But I'm sure he could be friendly to a high elf if he met one. He doesn't hate all high elves. He knows that just because you're a high elf doesn't necessarily mean that you'll have the same opinions. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh. I'm just... That guy got the jump on me. Don't know what's happening, who that is. Let's take some perks before we decide to mix it up with this guy. Uh, we will get this. Reduce the stamina cost of power attacks with one-handed, yes. And... We'll hold off for a second. Okay, it is a... Yep. Do you? Ooh. Oh, here's what I need to do. Let's use... Our new spell, Ice Flash. Okay, we definitely... Whoa, dude, this guy is like right on us. Okay. Okay. We're going to throw out some uh, Frost Cloud. Bob and, move, Bob and Weave, Bob and Weave. Okay, come on. Slowing him down, slowing him down. Let's bite. Oh, I thought we could. Okay. In my defense, that guy got the jump on me. Snuck up on me. At least I know he's coming this time. Will he come again? I don't know. Spare a coin for an old woman, my lord. That dude just moved on us. That was smart, though. Props to the vampire hunter. For, uh... Preying on us. Touché. Now I'm nervous 
the hunter has become the hunted, right? I do like that these vampire hunters come. Makes the game more interesting. I'm going to do dock myself 500 gold for that. We have the gold to do it too. Welcome. Let me know if you want anything. I think I've got a clean mug Just around waiting there. for him to barge to that door. This here's Candle Hearth. Sure thing. It's yours for a day. Yeah. I'll show you to your room right this way. Thank you, miss. Let me know if there's anything else you need. All right. Okay, I'm just all types of nervous. I know that he's near, he's coming. Oh, and this isn't going to be good, too. We need to feed almost right away because we're going to be blood starved. Fortunately, we took the blood metabolism perk, so that's going to help. Looks like lunch has arrived. Hello, ma'am. All right, let's eat. All right. Ooh. Sorry, just a little on the jumpy side. Okay, where is Got she? Some fresh baked bread and good cheese if you're after a bite to eat. Mm -hmm. If you've got some time, stop by my house of curiosities. I promise you'll see wonder. Well, you're an interesting guy. Your skin's as pale as the snow. You scared of sunlight or something? Uh, no comment. Am I scared of sunlight? I I'm... made my fortune as a sea captain. All right. So we sense something else here, hmm. and that was this vampire. So he starts giving us information on the boy right. who is trying to contact the Brotherhood. And uh, we know we are both vampire. We, right. we see it in each other. And uh, we're basically saying that we're just moving through the city and that uh, we don't want to prey upon his turf. So it was valuable. He also let us know a place where we can sell some of our goods. So that's going to come in handy. Oh, what time is it? 7.28. So we, we can grab a snack. But also... So purge ourselves of... Oh, man. Is he not open? I thought the gray quarter would be a haven for my kind. Okay. Well, looks like his place isn't open. No secret. Who's going to stop you? Me? I'll have no part in that. Uh, we'll go stop him. We'll have a chit chat with this young man named Arantino. Summon the Dark Brotherhood. How could he do such an act? This is very important intel. We'll let them move by. Nice hat, kid. But we will move inside. We're using a lockpick. We don't want to make a lot of noise. 
hit it with our our mace, silver vein. I hope you guys are doing good today. I'm having a great day. Sweet mother, sweet mother, send your All right. This is actually very sad as a human to hear this boy doing this. Let's just watch. Die, Grelod, die! Grelod, who is she? Please, how long must I do this? Let's read this. Master Aventinus Arentino. Jarl Ulfric Stormcloak wishes to express his deepest sympathies at the death of your mother, Nalia. Unfortunately, because you are fatherless, you have no other known relations. The Jarl cannot allow you to remain in your home unsupervised. Therefore, in no more than a week's time, you are to report to Honor Hall Orphanage in Riften. We know where that place is. It's near our old place, Hasim's Fang, that old fort where you will reside until your 16th birthday. The Arantino family home is the city is in the city of Windhelm will of course remain your property. The building will be secu securely locked and ready for your return six years hence. Note that I am unsure of the education provided to you by your, by your recently deceased mother or if you possess the ability to read the letter. Oh my gosh. I am currently composing. Therefore, a member of the city guard will call upon you in a week at your home and provide escort to the orphanage. Hopefully, his arrival will not come as a complete shock. With the greatest respect, your lift steward to our most noble Yara. Dude, they do not give a crap about this Why kid. Won't you answer me? <sighs> this is so sad. Please, how long must I do You've come at last! I knew you would! It worked! All I right, all you. All right. I did the Black Sacrament over and over with the body and the things. And then you came, an assassin from the Dark Brotherhood. Yes, of course, it the Black so Sacrament. Long. So very long. But now that you're here, you can accept my contract. Contract? My mother, she. she died. I... I'm all alone now. So they sent me to that terrible orphanage in Riften. Honor Hall! The headmistress is an evil, cruel woman. They call the Grelod the kind. But she's not kind. She's terrible to all of us! So I ran away and came home and performed the Black Sacrament. Now you're here and you could kill Grelod the kind! Well... You did? Really? This is the best news I've ever gotten. Oh yeah. I mean, I knew the Dark Brotherhood was good. We killed her. That good? You killed the old hag before I even asked. Oh, and please, take this as payment. It's an old family heirloom. It's supposed to be pretty valuable. It should fetch you a nice price. Thank you again. So, I guess we killed her? I had completely forgotten. I'm glad Hasim remembered. Um, wow, interesting. I thought we were gonna have to make our way back to. I genuinely, as a player, this is out of character. Thought we were gonna have to go back to Riften. I planned on making a trek back up there, all the way, just heading basically down through here, back to Riften. But we killed Grella the kind. So that's good. I'll ha Hasim will contemplate what to do next. Um, until then, there's a book I wanted to read. And this is the story of the first vampire. So Hasim is reading it for the first time, and so am I. So uh, we'll skip a brief account of LeMay Lama Ball and the restless death. This is the story of the first vampire. As bright, brighter grow, grows light, darker becomes shadow. So it passes that the Daedra Moloch Ball looked on Arche and thought the Aedra prideful of his domain or the death of man and myrrh, and it was soothed. 
ball where whose sphere is the wanton oppression and entrapment of mortal souls so, sought to thwart RK, who knew that not man nor myrrh nor beast folk of of all Nern would escape eventual death. The Hadra and doubtless of his fear and so Moloch Ball set upon Nern to best death. So this is interesting. Ball is the good guy in the story from Hasim's perspective that the Adra would be oppressive to mortals and they would curse them to live a mortal's life that they don't have to die but our case seemed that that was right. And so Ball has brought the cure of vampirism and to bring peace to Nern. This is Hasim's perspective. Tamriel was still young and filled with danger and wondrous magic when Ball walked in aspect of a man and took a virgin. Okay, this is getting weird. Lame Bolafog, sounds French from the Nedic people. I think the Nedic people are the Imperials. Correct me if I'm wrong. The ancient Imperials. Savage and loveless, Ball profaned her body, and her screams became the shrieking winds, which still haunt certain windings, uh, fjords of Skyrim, shedding a lone uh, uh, droplet of the blood on her brow. Ball left Nern, having sown his wrath. Oh, this is getting creepy and weird. Violated and comatose, LeMay was found by the uh, nomads and created, cared for her a fortnight. Hence the nomads, weird woman enshrouded LeMay in pal for she had passed into death. In their way, the nomads built a bonfire to em emulate the husk. That night, LeMay rose from her funeral pyre and sat upon the coven, still aflame. She ripped out the throats of the women, ate the eyes of the children, and raped their men as cruelly as Ball had ravished her. Jeez, man, this is brutal. <sighs> this is our blood mother, who was the first vampire. And so LeMay, who is known to us as blood matron, imprecated in, in, in her foul aspect upon the folk of Tamriel and begot a brood of countless abominations from which came the vampires, most cunning of the night whores. And so with the scourge of undeath wrought upon Tamriel, cruelty mocking Arke's rhythm of life and death, through all coming eras of the uh, et, uh, of the etrut and for all his sadness, RK knew this would be not undone. Ooh, that's creepy. Yes, the blood matron has brought us peace and give us given us immortality. I thank you guys for coming, and we will see what happens to Hasim in the next episode. Thank you for watching.